Hey, sweet. Okay, we're online. Hey, thank you for tuning in to Lockdown Love Berlin TV. My name is Craig Barrow. I'm a designer. I work in the areas of sculpture and objects. A uh, big thank you for Felix for having me on. Um, so I'm here. I'm going to talk about a bit of what I do, um, talk through making things. I'm going to turn off WhatsApp. Um, yeah, so when LLB asked me to do this, I wanted to give an insight of um, my work and what I do, taking through some of the objects I have in my studio, some things I've been working on, uh, and just show a bit about my process. Um, but I also wanted to bring on someone who has a, also has a knowledge and understanding of making things and objects, So, but from a different angle. So joining me is my good friend Matilda Kaskowski. Uh, design commissioner, curator, designer, everything else. Hey, Matilda. <laughs> Hat and hair twirler. <laughs> hey, Matilda. So, I'm good, I'm good. Um, do you want to tell us about yourself better than I did? <clears throat> hey, Craig. Thanks hey. for thinking of me when you got this invitation. Hey, super Felix. <laughs> Um, I think you pretty much nailed it down. I work uh, in design, but also outside of design. I work also with architecture and art. Uh, I make exhibitions. I uh, consult. Um, I create frameworks for different people and different practices. Uh, practices, and I like to initiate contexts. And yeah, and now I'm here uh, cleaning the online space together with you. To discuss uh, the idea of making and commissioning and how this is made or done. Cool. Nice. So, um, so you work obviously with designers and stuff a lot. What do you find is the hardest thing about working with designers? Meeting expectations always. You know, like. Uh, because I, I'm, I'm trained as a designer, I come with hardcore expectations towards the outcome, which uh, is really hard for me to step away from what I'm expecting sometimes. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, when I work you know, with urban planners and then scientists, a sci uh, psychologists, and then artists, and a project comes together, it's very important for the effect of the work that everyone gets what they wanted. Right. And I, uh, yeah. But what, what, what is the hardest for you when you when you produce objects and sculptures? Uh, often it's kind of communicating actually how things are made mm. and the kind of process it takes, like how sometimes difficult it is to make a small change or to adapt something. Like a lot of people think that they can almost have a, a finished object and then adapt that. Um, yeah, so it's also always good when you're working with someone who actually has a basic understanding of making things because they can kind of um, understand that and that helps what I want to go as well. I mean, if you don't have that, you better get paid very well and then it's fine, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, that's also not always the case. But, yeah. but so how does a day with, at Craig Barrow's studio look like? I mean, how, what, what did you do today, for example? So today I've got like, well, unfortunately recently I've had a lot of work cancelled because of the whole COVID thing, which is great because I've actually got more time to just work on a few different kind of backburner ideas that I've been having for so long. Example? Mm -hmm. um, right, and so I've got. What about, what about that Virgil Abloh collab that you maybe also could present? Oh yeah, see if we got that. I mean, it's an um, old, but it's still a goldie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so these are something I made that with uh, with V. With that, was, that was for this show now in Chicago. Yeah, MCA. Yeah. So yeah, we've I've been speaking with the Virgil for a while, um, and. He, uh, yeah, we've thrown a lot of ideas back and forth, and this is kind of a, this is kind of one of the samples, but it was kind of a, an idea of these other sort of objects that I've been creating. 
Uh, it's using like a sandblasting technique, sort of shape this foam, and a lot of it is to do with just like letting the kind of the sandblaster kind of roughly take the form. Really, a okay. Lot but maybe to, for people to explain, the second project of the sec, the phony part that Craig was showing is basically uh, a standard form that he uses to mold an object. So it's a shape before the mold actually comes into existing, and it's a commission uh, that he... Uh, or it's actually a self-initiated commission that you did, no? Isn't it uh, the, the uh, bottle with the six sake gl uh, glasses? Let's say again. Isn't this a beautiful bottle? With the sake uh, glasses that you... Oh, that was something else, the thing from DOH. Okay, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Well, we can talk about that. I'm still working on those. Yeah, show us. Yeah. Great okay. objects. Well, otherwise, I'm going to show something that I actually have on my, <laughs> on my table, where I sometimes place a raspberry on top of it, for sort of for fun. Nice. It's actually something that Craig also designed. It's a collaboration that he did for Air Max in collaboration with Peggy Gu. It's a limited uh, edition of 300, and I got a signed copy, Nancy. And I have that as a as a daily enhancement and uh, mood lifter <laughs> on my desk. Yeah. So show us the project that you did at DOH. So, like, DOH, I guess, is this amazing collective, would you call it, called Designers on Holiday, uh, based on the Swedish island of Gotland, uh, where every year they invite uh, about 20 designers, makers, craftspeople to come and spend a week or two. Friends of friends. Huh? Technically friends of friends. Friends of friends, yeah. Into this amazing campsite on this Swedish island, and you basically are being asked to create work in response to the environment. Um, and basically, Gotland is covered in amazing limestone. You just see these big piles of limestone everywhere. Um, and so, um, in the camp, we've got almost like there's so much amazing stuff that's been made there. But we had, I mean, it came from drinking, really. We had no shot glasses. That was the original idea. So, I wanted to create shot glasses out of the rocks. So I took these small pieces of limestone, I made these real like um, lo-fi plaster casts and cast all these small shot glasses which could then be made and drunk from. But then I kind of, I did that one year and then the next year I took it back and I wanted to expand it so I'd be making bigger sort of carafts, various different um, vessels, all from the same thing like taking these bits of limestone making molds of them and casting them in a different material. But you're selling them now, it's a, it's a carafe of a set of six glasses, right? Yeah. One carafe, six glasses. And a white and a black version. Well, I mean, I love, I mean, they're all made from porcelain, and I love, um, I love color, and I love adding these different colors, but I'm never really a big fan of glaze, because you just like lose so much of the texture. So I've been experimenting a lot with uh, playing with um, mason stains, which is like something you add to the porcelain. And let me get some other examples of colors. So for example, this is still porcelain, but you can color it. And you don't lose any of the texture. Like I always thought with glazes, it's so like on the ceramic. So on the piece, like as an afterthought almost in so many cases, um, that you lose that kind of surface detail and texture, which I'm kind of more interested in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. How do, you go, how do you go about I mean, like for example, the, the way I work is I usually have a certain context mm -hmm. and I uh, do a studio visit. So let's imagine this is a studio visit and I've seen the studio a few times. Uh -huh. Um, I have a discussion with a potential designer, artist, or, uh, or architect, or anyway, any kind of practitioner, and then we talk about what what, what could be made, you know. And uh, I don't know. We could, for example, come up with a brief. Mm -hmm. um, 
Is there something you're working on at the moment that you actually that is intriguing for you? Uh, right now, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of my work. It's kind of the basic inspiration is often just things I see or learn yeah. about, often from uh, science, nature, uh, industry, and I kind of will try to recreate them or mimic them in some way or the other. Ah, so. well maybe we could mimic something that is soft and hard at the same time. Kind okay. of be kind of you know, like because I kind of it's a nice tension between soft and hard in a little object or you know in something that you have in your domestic environment. Right. Okay. So I mean, I've actually been playing with this idea of somehow managed to like capture something that's made out of liquid or water. There's something that's flowing, but then like keep it solid and create objects with it. Like, like, like a, it's almost honestly, but maybe it's I'm too long in isolation. It sounds like, like you want to create a pool. <laughs> yeah. You know, something that kind of is hard is in its architect, in its architectural features, but then obviously there's liquid inside, which is water, and then that, mm -hmm. that is kind of soft. It's, in, it's some, maybe something that could be like a table object that is imaginative. Yeah, like an inverted swimming pool, like a swimming pool. Because I mean, a swimming pool, it's still, it's still got this like surrounding. It's still holding the water. So what if the the water could be the pool itself? Yeah. So what if oh. the whole object could look like the water, but still yeah. be the pool? You could cast it, no? Yeah, I could do that. I do a lot of casting work. I mean, maybe you, you're going to uh, use uh, Jessamite? Yeah, I've got some of that. We can try that. Maybe for everyone to explain it, Jessamite is kind of a self-hardening self material that hardens very fast. It's extremely popular in the last, mm -hmm. since the last years. Well, it's actually, it's basically plaster of Paris, gips, yeah. and instead of adding water, you add a acrylic resin, basically. So it sets super hard. Uh, you can then machine it, you can Super color toxic. it. Hmm? Super toxic. <laughs> it's actually uh, non-toxic, it's classed as a bioresin. Okay, but I mean, it's not probably I mean, it's not the most natural material. Mm. But, it, but it's a sexy material. Yeah, it's nice, it kind of has a stone-like finish. Um, okay, let's do it, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. So, okay, here we go. This is something I've been working on. Okay, maybe I'm going to try and get... A third camera in here, so you can see. Can you third camera? Yeah. Okay, sweet. All right. So I've been like forming these shapes using uh, basically balloons. This is one I did earlier. Cool. Oh, nice! It's a pool. It's already almost a pool. Yeah. No, because I, I don't understand why they design pools. Almost super, you know, like pretty much like they're generic in its size and rectangular. Yeah. What I like about this one, it kind of associates the idea that it's a mountain around the pool and you're kind of lying out on it. Yeah, I mean, I never get like it's proper Miami Vice in the sort of 80s. I never get why pools are square. I understand why pools are square. It's easy to make them that way. But why wouldn't you want like a pool that re re resembles water in some way as well? But I mean, that's not really true because in, in the history of pool, uh, pools, and to be honest, I think they were introduced in the 20th century, and I think they were popularized in, in the US and maybe in Europe. I don't know. I mean, Germany doesn't really have a mini pool. How many people do you know in Berlin who have a pool? I don't know any. <laughs> not no? enough. But uh, anyone out I, there has a pool, hit us up. But in all fairness, and there's a lot of foods that are liquid, look, have liquid shapes, but not in Europe, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a very American kind of thing. Yeah, right. Very an A. Yeah. Green. Okay, so let's do it. Can you maybe put a pigment in it? Like, it would make it a little more colorful. Yeah, so I mean, like, this is how it works is my process that you often have to create a master. So you can do that anything you can think of, any way you can make a form. Um, yeah. It can be a blob, it can be something you found in the street, it can be something you've made out of rope, out of clay. So you create that master, and then there's a series of um, steps that you go through to then 
create a mold and then you can make casts from. So, so we can do that. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to make a silicon mold of this and then we can uh, make some casts of it. Cool. Give me a sec. Matilda, Maybe I can tell one? everyone else what I did the whole day. Yeah, Matilda, what did you do today? Uh, I just came up or got off a three and a half hour seminar for the AA, the Architectural Association, the Architecture School in London. It's actually kind of, kind of linked to maybe the idea of having a little domesticated pool on your table that you can dream of, you know, it's kind of imaginary object or fantasy, or, you know, domestic fantasy in a way. Mm -hmm. um, because when Eva French asked me to become a tutor for the speculative studies, I kind of, you know, like we were already in isolation. And I mean, I changed my topic a little bit and I was thinking, the course has to be called interior comforts, you know, because also there's a double meaning, you know, interior comforts, because you it's about, you know, spatial and physical comfort, but it's also about mental comfort. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting how architecture students really think about, you know, objects in the, in the built environment and what you actually need to survive in, in isolation, basically. So that, that was kind of, it's kind of nice, but... Three and, a half, three and a half hour online seminars are killing your brain. Yeah, so, sure. If someone's going to tell me the future of, of school is uh, online, definitely not. Yeah, I think we will kind of like, when this whole thing started, the whole Zoom thing and online cinemas was super fun. But, and everyone was talking about how it's going to reinvent the way we do things. But I think everyone's already a bit tired of it. I think um, human interaction Never. It's always the best. Yeah. It's a thing. Even yeah. now, me showing that, you know, different objects that I have on my table, I mean, yeah. looking at it does create the same sensation than actually touching it and interacting it. But it's perfect because now you're doing the silicon mold. Exactly. I mean, that's really, but, and now it's like a silicon. I mean, especially with objects, especially for what you and I work in, um, objects are objects, they're haptic, they need to be felt, they need to be touched to really understand right. them. You can never do that on a screen or a picture. No. So. I agree. Cool. What is that you've got? What is that? Um, I, honestly, I cleaned up my, uh, one of my uh, desk spaces yesterday and I, I, it's an object that's a studio portable uh, from London, oh, yeah. uh, Bernadette and Tetsuo. Oh, yeah. They just did a small edition once and it's basically uh, a, an ice block maker, ice cube maker, but it's only for one big ice cube. That's nice. But I, <laughs> I mean, it's not just, a, I mean, to be honest, it's the perfect isolation object because I'm in isolation by myself at the moment. So, I mean, I only need one ice cube for one drink in the evening. <laughs> so, here we go. Nice. All right, so I'm just going to talk through what I'm doing here. So, on the third cam here, basically, so I took that first shape that I made and I'm basically mm -hmm. surrounding it, basically making a wall around it, which I can then basically... Uh, pour the silicon over. Nice. So you want to seal it. And uh, yeah, get that all the way around. I've kind of already done it a bit with the glue gun. So next up, silicon. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to mix this up. This isn't super exciting. Um, did, you, did you always knew that you will become a maker? It's, mm, I was kind of always, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, I was always sort of making stuff when I was younger. I actually first got into making when um, I wanted to, like, I'd see toys online, or not online, on TV, which I wanted. And, you know, of course, my parents wouldn't get me everything I said I wanted, so I'd start trying to make them, like, out of cardboard. And that's how I first started making things, trying to <laughs> make toys which I found, uh, which I saw on the TV. Did, did, do you still have some pictures of them? No, I mean, this was like kind of the way back, like 
But now, seriously, I did a, I did a, uh, my mom was when I would become an artist or a sculptor because I did a, a little family when I was four years old out of plastiline. Uh -huh. And when I asked my mom, why didn't you take pictures? My mom said, no one would take, would, would have taken pictures of things like that back then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for sure, like, you don't think about that, I mean, because, I mean, we have, my, fa my, my parents still keep all their photos, but they have, like, a year's worth of pictures in an album, you know, of maybe 40 photos, yeah. whereas now we probably take, like, 40 photos a day or a week. I mean, it would be probably a day. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, basically, what I'm doing here is I've got, like, the raw silicon. And then to do it, you have to add a like, catalyst. So let's create this. I cannot see it, so for me it's hard to comment. All right, yeah. <laughs> I hope everyone on the Twitch screen. Everyone on the Twitch, Twitch screen, just to explain. Oh, no, no, the Twitch screen people see it, but basically yeah. I cannot comment it because I'm doing this with him via Skype, and then he twitches the bird screen in. But I've seen people pouring things in, with their, you know, and fiddling around with silicon. So fair enough. It's it's a treat for you, and I just keep it in my imagination. So, yeah. What are those videos called where um, it's like relaxing things happening? AS ASMR. ASMR. Yeah. yeah, a lot of that. It's I throw my hair. It's also ASMR. Maybe maybe. Uh, and maybe James Tyler Foster is watching. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. And then we can mention that he's actually just opened a month ago a show in a museum in Stockholm called Arctis, where he did a whole show about uh, the phenomenon of AS ASMR, which I forgot what the third version was standing for, but basically it's about the sensation of setting. Yeah. Or putting your hair, stuff like this, for all of you on the Twitch screen. Or when you slowly it's okay. And he made they made that amazing um, face filter on Instagram. For I've it. seen more face filters, but this is fun face filter. It's a nice face filter. You in like this bubbly, sweet environment? It's okay. okay. So I think the whole bit and the whole idea that you would produce a reference to your exhibition uh, uh, as a face filter that people can use, I find I find that very interesting. It's very contemporary, you know. Mm -hmm. it's very. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a great way to promote it as well because. I mean, some face filters can just go viral. Um, yeah. It's super cool. I actually want to do that. My next plan is to basically every object I make turn into a, a filter. How would, can you describe how the, how the face filter for the little domestic pool that you were just designing? No, no, it's actually not a domestic pool. It's a fantasy a domestic pool. fantasy desktop pool. Fantasy desktop. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I don't know. I mean, my, my dream would be, I'm g maybe someone out there knows how to do it and can help me out. Um, I'd love to, like, using augmented reality and the Instagram filter thing, so you can place your little uh, desktop fantasy pool in any sort of environment. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's a lot, what a lot of furniture companies also do, you know, like where you you basically you know how the product looks like. You take a picture yeah. with your iPhone, and then you can already see how it could potentially look like in your own environment. You can do that on Amazon now with some objects. Have you seen this? Yeah. yeah. You okay. can like, see how this... Uh, I mean, my girlfriend and I just got a dog, and you can actually see how some like a dog toy will look in your home. I must really say that I think that probably... Uh, if, if Fufu Felix would give Rudy a slot in his lockdown Berlin series, 
I think that would be probably insanely popular because yeah. just looking at a dog for 40 minutes running around in lockdown, I think that's a very pleasurable act. And I mean, I've seen Rudy only once when I bumped into your girlfriend Holly, but um, but I think yeah, that will be pretty insane. Yeah. So <laughs> also, animals, I also animals need much more more you know need need also be shown off on online on these online platforms. Animals, everyone loves animals. Yes, yeah. of course. Everyone loves, and actually, you know, in this time when we're all in isolation, people just love seeing cute animals. It makes everyone feel feel better. Funny enough, so we're kind of teaching our dog to be alone at the moment, and so we we, we videoed him in. Um, he's got like a pen in our room, and we videoed him while we were away, and he managed to escape from his pen somehow. But the video cut out for about one minute whilst he escaped. So we have no idea still how he escaped. And it's like completely not clear. There's no like signs, none of the doors are open. Magic. Magic. Okay. So I've mixed up this silicone. I'm going to put it in my vacuum chamber. Um, it's, I'm going to mute everything because it's super annoying. But Matilda, do you have like, do you want to read something? Have you got something nice? You could. I have always something to read. Can also sing. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. No, don't. All right. don't. I'm gonna go mute, and I'm gonna ch give me a thumbs up if it's muted. All right. I'm yeah okay. What I can do is actually I can Google something about pools and read it out. I will do that. I can totally hear you. I'll make you in the background, and I just read it. Out. I don't know, I can totally hear you. Okay. So guys, it's reading time. Swimming pools entered into the domestic realm at the beginning of the 20th century. At first reserved for luxuries home, pools gradually became accessible to the middle classes thanks to the development of industrial processes. I can link for to you, Craig, even though it's not an industrial process, but it's a process that he, he's, he's showing you guys right now. From the 1950s onwards, pools conquered American sub suburban backyards as they spread out. At the end of the 1960s, the United States had approximately 800,000 swimming pools. At the end of the 1990s, the number of in-ground residential pools approached 4 million. rapid rise and its capacity to create social rituals and representations which are unique to Okay, sweet. I mean, for you, those of you at home, you can see the the silicon degassing right there. It's a pretty, it's oh, pretty nice. Quick put the cam over there. Yeah, exactly. Ah. Almost all there. Nice. So what are we gonna do? I mean. I was just thinking it should be an addition. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Right. Cool. I'm just checking we're back. Fantasy. Back on back online. We need, we need a title. Oh, did you mm -hmm. Terrible muted? Right, so I just got a, a comment. Uh, what does degassing mean? So basically 
I hope everyone can hear me. Jan Strauss FM, can you hear us? Cool. Now, yeah, both. Great. Okay, so basically degassing what I'm doing, you can see, is when you mix up the silicon, it has loads of bubbles in it. So you put it in a, a vacuum chamber, and it basically sucks all the air out of it, and that basically sucks all the bubbles out of your of the mold that you make. Because, uh, yeah, you don't want bubbles in your mold, because then they're going to come through on the cast. So yeah, and it also, it just looks nice in the vacuum chamber. I want to see two. Okay, it's nearly done. So what it does, it rises up, it bubbles, and then it drops again. The over, how, how long does the overall process I would uh, take for you to do an object like that? Say again? No, I'm going to ask you actually different questions. Okay. No, I'm not, no, I'm not trying to ask you. Process? You know what? We didn't tell anyone how we actually met. Yeah, of course. That's actually what we wanted to do in the beginning. <laughs> Let's do it now then. You want to tell him? Yeah, let me just grab... I'll tell you what. Okay, I start. You start, because I'm going to pour this silicon. Yeah, so, so about 10 years ago, 2010, uh, Craig was studying at the University in Brighton in, in the UK, and I was doing an internship at Martino Gamper Studio in London. And back then, uh, there was this eruption of the Icelandic um, volcano. volcano. And no flights would fly back from Milan, back to any destinations. And back then, Martino Gamper was also, or still is, with friends with Max Lamp, a designer that is also based in London. And I was working with Max Lamp a few times, um, together with Tom Gottely, who was the founder or co-founder of uh, DOH, Designers on Holiday. Um, and I ended up being uh, sitting in a bus next to Craig, uh, and we're hanging out. And what did we do? We played Hangman for like seven hours. <laughs> because back then, no one, none of us actually had a smartphone that you could use to distract yourself. I mean, I think I had a Nokia. What kind of phone did you have? I think then I was rocking... I would have had a Blackberry. Blackberry? It's like a, like a business, like like a business ad, you know? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I had a Nokia phone. A tiny display, maybe, well, I totally didn't think that I could have received pictures, or maybe pictures were possible already, right? Of course, 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we ended up playing Hangman for hours. Hours and hours, okay. So what was it, 30 hours, right? 30, something like that. I remember it took a while. Bit of fun, though. Okay. Yeah, was insane. Hey, you know... How's the process going? It's pretty good. Just a bit of hair in the silicon. All right. So basically, yeah, I pour that in. That'd be jabby. You know how many of my friends commented on your hair last night when when uh, Fufu Felix started to post? Like, Who's that man with that wonderful hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. In competition. <laughs> I think both my hair looks pretty good in those in that photo. Yeah, but I think you, I mean, I think you, you're winning the hair up thing. I'm pretty sure Holly says the same. Let's get a live debate in the chat. Who's got better hair? Matilda or I? Yeah, please make it a discussion. Who has better hair? All right, sweet. Okay, I just poured this. So this is going to take like uh, a few minutes to set. So let's, uh, how about, do you want a game of Hangman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've not played in like a few years. I okay, let's play something. Alright, people in the chat, 
I was wondering why this is hanging over there. I thought it'd be fine. Okay. Okay, let's do it. Can the, but can the audience also participate? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Keep it in the chat. I think it's not politically correct to call it hangman, but it's fine. Yeah. So okay, so E. E? Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is a, uh, a word that we all kind of uh, spoke about today. Okay. A. A. Yeah. D. D. But it's very standard, standard letters, 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 no? Some of them, actually. Huh? Uh, S. Mm. Almost looks like design. But uh, there's some, okay. okay. I. You're too good at this. Okay. K. Huh? K. K. No. I have to screen share you. Okay. okay. Uh, oh. oh. Domestic. Yeah. Domestic. Okay. Because we said the word so many people today. What's it gonna be? Okay. So. It's domestic ass. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a picture of this? Okay, so it's um, B. B, nope. Oh. Um, N. M. No. N. Yeah. And like uh, no North Pole. M. M. M like Matilda. Hi then. Oh yeah, of course I had that already. So. O. No, he yeah, already. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, e. T. T. E. Antas. Huh? No, I'm, I'm just reading out loud. Antas. Antas. Fantasy! Boom. Domestic fantasy. Boom! Love it. It's like, you know, a swimming pool. Isn't that all our domestic fantasy? Oh, these are domestic fantasies. Exactly. All right, sweet. So, perfect. So, the silicon set. I'm going to take some jasmine. It was a very unlock experience. Huh? It was a very unlock experience. Yeah. Unborrowed. <laughs> All right, sweet. So this is how it works. You take your powder. Mm -hmm. You take your uh, your liquid. But let's color it, Matilda. What's your what's your favorite color at the moment? Blue. <laughs> Blue, as always. Okay. What's your favorite a, a object that you like with a good color? I like purple. I like the silver one. Okay. I mean, pretty much my desktop, desktop is kind of bluish. Okay, like. I'm going to try this pigment. Hello, Add this in. That's nice. I also realized that we both dressed in the same, same color, color, like unintentionally. It was unintentional. Uh, was, was it intentional? No, we didn't think about it. Yeah, exactly. Autumnal. 
everything, everything happens for a reason, that's what they say. say. Exactly. Okay, sweet. This is a nice color. So basically, there. Yeah, this is another thing I love about this material. You can like pigment it and color it. Maybe you have, have to say that the, the, the uh, about the, the or mention the material, material again, again because some, some people obviously don't look uh, don't look the whole don't, don't view the whole thing. Jasmine. Jasmine. Right. So it's basically. My God, that purple. Sorry. It's nice. Yeah. Right. So it's basically a powder, which is basically plaster of Paris. It's a. Uh, Acrylic resin, which is non-toxic, believe it or not, and water-based. And what you do is you take your liquid, you add your powder, and you mix it up. Gonna mix it for like a minute, make sure it's well mixed. What's the most favorite part for you in doing these uh, these processes? Say again? What is the most pleasurable thing about doing this about this process? <laughs> Mostly mixing things up. This looks beautiful. Now I've got some beautiful pink goo. Purple. Purple, sorry. Important to wash your things quick as well. Right, so here we go. Finding another thing now. Yeah. So a good tip is to avoid air bubbles. Hey, let's do this. It's always good to like build things on a shelf. So you can tap. You'll see why in a minute, right? Okay. So okay, again, I'm gonna pour this in. And it's always useful. To like pour onto something. This way it reduces air bubbles. I mean, it can be something with a nice feature air bubbles, but it really depends. Yeah, I mean, it's good if you can know how to control them. Mm. Hey, that's nice. So, some places where the pigment hasn't fully mixed in. Don't know if you can see that on the screen. Yeah. Okay, okay, so, so why, why don't we just, just then make, make an addition of it? Make like an addition of five domestic, maybe it's from a series of domestic fantasies and it's the, it, 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 it's the desktop pool. <laughs> nice. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do that for Lockdown Love. Maybe we, maybe your Felix will let us uh, sell them through the channel. But do, do we, do we, we feature some products? Um, anything's possible, you know? Okay. okay. I think it's not. I mean, we, we, no, we are spending almost an hour now going through this process, talking about the desire of jumping into a pool. This imagination, I mean, are, are, are pools and bullying going to be open at some point? I think they're opening soon, this week, next week. It's kind of exciting. I mean, I mean we are really blessed. One of my students uh, that is based in India, in India, uh, in, in uh, uh, Delhi, she, 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 she hasn't, hasn't left, left her house and she's by herself since eight, eight weeks. weeks. Can, Can you imagine? imagine? Wow. That's insane. That's, That's lockdown. lockdown. 
That is lockdown. That's real lockdown. We've been quite lucky here in Germany. It's been a kind of, yeah. kind of a loose but, lockdown. Because the, the head of this country is a former scientist. Yeah. Smart. All right, so I poured it. Again, bubbles. This is why it's good to have it on a board so you can sort of shake it. Stop hitting that now. All right, so we need to let that set for a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, that'd be sweet. So we're going to make an addition of them. I would, I would say we do an addition of five or ten, and then these can be made if possible. And then we, I don't know, maybe the, every, everything that's going to be sold goes to uh, to a lockdown, lockdown artist. Nice. Yeah. Support your artists, support your local artists. And we go, go for, for dinner. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do also, that. Also, support the local businesses. Exactly. Get the economy going again. Hey, by the way, Craig, why did you go to uh, Berlin, actually? Because you're a lot more in Berlin than I am. Yeah, I mean, funny enough, I moved here. I was in London before, and um, nothing was... I mean, I was just all the, the stress of London. I felt like I wasn't going anywhere. I was wasting, felt like I was wasting my time. Uh, and then a few friends, uh, my girlfriend as well, was like, hey, why don't we move to Berlin for a year and just basically do nothing. So we did that. We moved to Berlin for a year. I moved my best friend, Jack. Um, Holly moved out. A few of her friends moved out. And we stayed for a year. We liked it. We stayed for another year. Um, we stayed for a few more years, and then we started businesses and working and studios, and we're still here. British colonization. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why did you move here? Domestic fantasies, basically. Basically, we wanted to live out domestic fantasies. But why did you move? Because you're in. <laughs> You've been everywhere. You've been London. Where did you live in the Netherlands? In Maastricht. In Maastricht. Then you were in Chicago for a little bit. Yeah. Basel. Basel. Born in Poland. Born in Poland. Grew up in Munich. No. no. I mean, I do. I do sometimes like a vice was with a with a wheat beer, but no, the love is not there. Uh, raised in in uh, West Germany, close to Cologne, uh -huh. close to Cologne. Cool. Yeah, but Berlin is a fine place. Everyone comes to Berlin at some point. Exactly. You don't have to go anywhere. Everyone's gonna come at some point. And they're gonna see you. Oh. But you know, the biggest irony actually about these days is. I don't know actually if I mentioned that, but I'm doing this show, uh, exhibition that opens in October in the Museum für Gestaltung in Zurich, in the Design Museum. And the title of it is actually Total Space, which is the irony by itself, you know, because when we when we started commissioning all these projects and work for this show that opens, um, we thought that we we're going to do studio visits and meetings, and now all the meetings that we have, all the communication that takes place is all happening online. Are you actually secretly drinking beer behind that screen? No, I'm drinking water, but I want it to be professional. <laughs> it's almost 8 p.m. I think I'm pretty sure you can, <laughs> if you can do this. <laughs> All right. Okay, great. This thing's set. Let's take it out. Okay. We are ready. We are ready for our domestic fantasies. Okay, ready? Ready for the grand reveal? I didn't do another camera. Oh well. I'm going to put it on now. I already saw a part of it. Here we go. Nice. It's not it's actually not as uh, uh, purpley as I thought. Yeah, I mean the color kind of changes a bit. Yeah. 
Here we are. Nice. This is our um, desktop. Can you really put in your shirt, t-shirt? Because we need a little bit more contrast, I think. Yeah, that's nice. Here we go. This is our lockdown desktop domestic swimming pool. Nice. Beautiful. Hopefully, yeah. Let's do an addition. We're going to stamp the bottoms. We're going to number them. Um, maybe we'll engrave whoever um, the name if whoever wants to uh, to buy them. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, let's do that. Present, per personified uh, little domestic pool objects. Exactly. Fantasies. So, like, you'll never be without a pool again. You will never be without a pool again. It's a perfect, perfect ending. Perfect ending. Cool. All right. Well, nice. Nice. Okay. Well, it was nice talking to you, Matilda. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to see you soon. Yeah. And hopefully we all will jump into a pool, in an actual pool. A real pool. Well, if the summer bads do open soon, let's do it. Prince and Bird with We'll take our domestic pool, our desktop domestic pools, and do a photo shoot next to a summer pool, summer bed. That's nice. It, you know how it actually also looks like? It looks like the uh, gummy boat, how do you call it? The floating boats that uh -huh. always are at Admiralsbrücke. Yeah. Like no one sitting, no one sitting in the water, uh, at the, on the grass anymore. Everyone is sitting in a, in a boat. Yeah, boat. Of course, it means or it's airplane. easier boat. to social distance when you're in a boat, you know? That's true. But it's not, never should be socially distanced. It's physical distance, in my physical point distance. of view. Yeah. But anyway. Social distance is the incorrect word, but. Yeah. Okay, cool. Craig, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure See you soon. to be with you. Thanks for joining me. Thanks to Lockdown Love, Berlin. Thanks to Felix. Thanks to everyone. See you soon. I will say Fufu. Fufu. Because of his uh, hashtag. Uh, no, no. It's uh, Instagram handle. Shout out Fufu Felix. Okay. Cool. I've been Craig Barrow. That's Matilda Kraskowski. Pretty good. I'll get there one day. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.